All right, so the last thing we're going to be doing in this tutorial, or the first part of this tutorial series, is we're going to be making it so that the player will stop if it hits a background, um, a backdrop object on the right or left side of him. So in order to do that, first, we have to make backdrop objects on the right and left side of him. So let's clone this, and we'll create two. Actually, no, let's create one. And we will change the size so that it is a barrier on the right side. And then we'll clone that one. And then we'll make a barrier on the left side. And now we've got our two barriers. Um, now we have to add two new objects. And these objects are going to be sensors for the right and left side of the player. So they're basically going to um, indicate where the right edge of the player is and where the left edge of the player is. So if we double click on an active object that we insert, you delete this and let's fill it with a solid color. Let's say red, you can do whatever color you want. Actually, no, not red because we already have red. Uh, let's do blue. And you want to modify the size. Let's do that in here, actually. Let's make it height of, let's do, let's try eight. And width two. Let's try that. And make sure you have stretch applied. And that looks pretty good. That'll work. Um, yeah. So now, we just want to, if I can click on it, it's really small. Clone this object and double click on the new one and make it a different color, say yellow. All right, so these are our two sensors. So the blue one will make it the right sensor, so let's rename it. Go over to our yellow, yellow tab here and click on the name and just name it right sensor. And then the yellow one, we'll name it left sensor. There we go. So we got our two sensors. Now we have to make it so that the sensors are following the object, so they their position changes with the object. So to do this, let's create a new always command. So always, and then under the blue, the right sensor, we'll do position, select position, click on the player to make it relative, and then you'll want to check the size of your player um, and, and where your and depending on where your hotspot is of your player, you are going to make it be the exact right middle of uh, position on the player. So for me, because the because it's the, the default and it's 32 by 32, the hotspot is up in the top left corner. We're going to make X 32 to make it all the way on the other side. And then we're going to make Y16 and bring it right down to the middle. And now you can see the square is exactly on the right middle. So try and make it as exact as possible. So check your, the size of your player and basically do what I did and make it the right middle. And then we're going to copy this over and do the same thing for the left one, only you're going to make it exactly on the left edge. And we'll change x to 0 for me to do that. Depends on what your, if it's just the default uh, diamond, then it would be the exact same thing. But make sure if you ever change um, um, the hot spot of the player or the size of the player or even what it looks like, just um, basically it, it doesn't, well, it doesn't necessarily have to be exact, but it just, it's this. Um, where the sensor is indicates the right side of the player so you just want to put it on the right side of where what it looks like the right side of the player is to the player so like you can't have the player be like this like you can't have the player be this and then have the right sensor be like over here because then he'll collide with the wall over here and that won't make any sense for your game so it depends on your player and make sure you change that if you ever change the size of your player or where the hot spot is so, um, so now if we try this, 
you can see the sensors are there, but they're kind of hanging down a little bit, and that's because we haven't modified the hotspot of the sensors. So in order to do that, you're going to double click on, let's start with the right sensor. If I can get it to double click on the sensor because it's really small. Oh my god. Come on. There we go. So go to your hotspot, and for the right sensor, you want it to be on the right middle side, right there. So if you zoom in, you'll see that it's right on the right middle. And you do that by clicking down here. Press OK. And then for the left sensor, you'll do it on the left middle side. And there you go. Your sensors are set up. Okay, so that's good. So now in order to make them collide with the wall, what we have to do is, first of all, um, what we want to happen is these first three commands that we have, which is um, accelerating when the right arrow is pressed, accelerating in the other direction when the left arrow is pressed, and always course, and always moving based on what move the move attribute is. We want to edit those so that th all three of those things only happen if neither of these um, sensors are touching a barrier. So insert collisions overlapping a backdrop. Negate it so that means it's not overlapping a backdrop. So it'll only happen if it's not overlapping a backdrop. Insert and we'll do the same thing for the left sensor. Negate it. And then we'll just copy these up to these top two. Now you'll notice if you try your game that you do hit the wall but if you try to go back left it's not gonna let you because the blue sensor is still hitting the wall so it won't let you move back left because it's because it's say you're not it doesn't it's not supposed to let you move left if one of them is overlapping a backdrop so what you want to do is you want to make the player bounce back a little bit so in order to do that you're going to do so drag one of these down I'll start with the right sensor Renegate it so that it's back to normal so it's just when it's overlapping a backdrop so if this is overlapping a backdrop then it will move the player right a little bit or left a little bit so movement or position set x coordinate to the current x coordinate minus one so it'll move it left one and it will continue to move it left one until it's no longer overlapping a backdrop. And then we'll do the same thing for the left sensor. We'll drag this down and edit it so it's plus one. Okay. Save it and if we try our game, as you can see, now the player will bounce back if it hits the wall. So that's pretty good. Um, that's it for this the first part of this tutorial series. Um, the next one will I'll show you how to add gravity and jumping and you know the vertical type of movements. Um, <coughs> so uh, be sure to subscribe. I'll try to post it up soon. Um, so subscribe, comment, like, all that fun stuff. See you later.